Hi everybody, Richard Cleveland here again. We're back for another episode of Wild Wanderings. Um, we're in a really nice, deciduous forest here, and there's a tree right here that we should pay attention to, especially when it comes to making a fire out in the wood. This is tulip poplar, or tulip tree, which really is not a poplar at all. It's in the magnolia family. And if I can find tulip poplars, I know that underneath it, on the ground, there's going to be branches that are going to more than likely have some type of usable tinder for starting a fire. I tell my students as they're walking through the woods, they literally, they literally trip on it, which is what I just did. So let's take a closer look here. There's a branch of a tulip poplar down, and it's kind of just caught my eye just walking around. So I'm going to go ahead and see if this will strip off here first off. Not too bad. Now I'm going to take my knife. I'm going to try to do this pretty, pretty quickly. If this piece is is ready, it might not be. Now, if you look, this has uh, the lighter part is the inner bark, which is which is the tinder. The outer bark, which is kind of crackly, kind of interferes with the with the spark or ember. So I'm just going to take a small piece of this and using my knife perpendicular at a right angle, I'm going to lightly scrape off. Some of this outer bark. Just see how much of it comes off. A little bit more. Now, just really quickly, I'm going to see if I can make a fast tinder bundle just out of this little bit. I'll use my shirt here to catch the dust on. A real small bundle. It's not too bad. I've seen better stuff than this. We'll keep our eye out for some more on our travels today. Let's see, just that quickly. Let's see if I can't get this to accept the spark. Now, we don't want to set the woods on fire, so I'm just going to clear a little spot. And I'll make sure I put it off if it indeed does catch. So this is just a really quick demo, small little bundle. Now, the knife I have is made by Mora. Many of you are familiar with Mora knives. For the money, probably the best carving knife that uh, you can possibly get. Now, this particular knife, called the Mora Light My Fire Knife, incorporates a ferrocerium rod built into the handle. Both these companies, Light My Fire and Mora, are both from Sweden, and the Swedes don't mess around when it comes to their steel. Let's see what, what this will do here. Just like that, I got a fire. One strike. There we go. Now I could add on to that very, very easily. Now, the only drawback to having a knife like this is that, of course, you, if you lose it, you lose two things instead of one thing. But just for kicking around the woods, this is a really handy knife. It only costs about maybe $25 or $30 on eBay, and that's usually with free shipping. It's a wonderful knife for your uh, go bag or your bug out bag. Um, I definitely carry one of these in mine, and I use it as a, as a backup utility carving knife. And you can see just how wonderful things like this can, uh, can work out for you in the woods. Put this out and continue our journeys. Hey, we're back. Just to continue um, talking about tinder, I showed you the inner bark of the tulip tree, or tulip popper as it's called. Um, but we have a couple other types of tinder here too, which in my opinion aren't as good as the um, inner bark of trees like tulip tree and also the inner bark of uh, cedar and juniper, or actually sometimes even the outer bark of those two. But here we have a um, we have a white pine that has fallen, and there's a bunch of grass um, mixed in with it. But first thing I'm going to try here with the ferrocerium rod are some of these appear to be very dry pine needles. And I'm not sure how this is going to work, but we're going to go ahead and give this a go. Get a spot here in the dirt surrounded by green, so we don't have to rub it and catch it on fire. Um, let's just see how this works. Now I have my mora knife again, and Another thing to remember about using these is that many people will push the knife down into the tinder, which can jostle the tinder. 
In this case, I'm going to hold the knife right where I want it, like on top of the tinder, and I'm going to pull the ferrocerium rod backwards across the edge. Notice too that I'm not using the sharp edge of the knife. I need that for other things. The back of this knife or spine is actually slightly um, concave so that it will catch an edge of this. Okay, let's let's give it a go. I'll see how this works. Mm. Two strikes that time, but clearly something that's very valuable and something that I could easily, if I would have gathered wood already, I could easily build off of that. So now, let's put that out. Make sure it's out really good. We're going to come over here now. I'm going to grab some grass. But I want to make sure that the grass that I'm going to grab is not laying on the ground. I want something that's up so it has air circling around it. Now I know we're using the ferrocerium rod to make fires. When I'm making friction fires or primitive fires, um, you can use grass and pine needles for friction fire, but they're very tricky. They're nowhere near fine enough to, to make it easily blown into flame. But they can be added to a tinder bundle of, of better quality in order just to give it some bulk to hold the heat in. Let's give this a try. Right about here. And we'll see if we can make this happen, right? One strike on that one, too. So it's pretty good. Um, anyway, just a couple other tricks to add to your arsenal of outdoor survival skills. Better put this one out. Let's make sure the fire is really out before we move on. It's really important. One thing that I always tell my students is that you should be able to put your hand on any part of where that fire was for at least five seconds without having to pull it back because of the heat. Once you've reached that point, yeah, that's totally safe to walk away from now. To be continued. <laughs>